Cool. What's up, guys? Uh, I am obviously Dave. <laughs> so, and we are going to be running Turtles 2. I am not, but Pikachu is. So, Pika is a really, 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 really good runner of this game. Uh, and I'll be helping them on commentary. Obviously, Dave, yes. <laughs> so, uh, I'll count down. Um, the, the timing, catch you know the timing on this one anyway. But as soon as Pika pushes start and you see basically like Raphael up here, uh, that's when the timing starts. So, uh, whenever you're ready, Pika, uh, you just push start and we can go. Okay. Ooh, hey! <laughs> Alright, so time starts now. <laughs> that was a little bit fast, but whatever. So, I saw in previous run, you know, like people were kind of shitting on Raphael. You know what? In this game, Raphael is like the king. And he's actually not really the king for like any kind of reason. Uh, but he's only the king really because there's like a weird glitch that even to this day that we don't even know is intentional or not. So you have Leonardo, Michelangelo, obviously Donatello. They're all worthless in this game, unlike the first game. And Raphael, for some weird reason, has a four pixel window that when he does his special slash, uh, it's just there. So we don't know if that's a glitch because every other turtle has the same hit range, but it actually matters because on some of these like foot soldier spawns where they're coming from like each side of the screen, you can hit them a little bit earlier. And then on top of that too, there used to be, used to, uh, be a very, really hard, frame-perfect kill on Rocksteady at the end of this stage, which caused a lot of resets back then. But with Raphael, it's literally free. Like, it's so free that if Kika misses it, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> but it's also free in the sense that I literally explained it to Kat. I gave her the controller, I said try it one time, and she did it the first time. So I'm going to really say that Rocksteady's quick kill now is free. Like, it's very free with Raphael. But literally, she has the one out of one try for Rocksteady. 100% she did it first try, so there you go. So yeah, uh, we're, we're nearing the end of the first stage. Uh, there's like these little guys, I guess they're called Roadkill Ronnies, is like the official lore. So that's what these guys are. They're kind of weird where they separate. Um, you can group them all together like that, and in the run, they're pretty annoying because they appear here and then they appear kind of in the last stage. And as you can see, they can kind of waste a lot of time when you jump through that. But this guy, this is, it's free. It's so free that you could even do it. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do rock steady. Uh, I'll be quiet a little bit. There is a little bit of precision to open this up, but we'll see. Pika! Pika, get out! <laughs> Alright, there we go. We're back in business. It's free. <laughs> oh man, there's, there's such a commentator curse. It's unreal. <laughs> so as you can see, absolutely free kill. <laughs> Alright, so we're entering stage two. Uh, these are the sewers, and, or not the sewers, sorry, I guess it's above ground, the sewers are next, so clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so one, I guess, important distinction is what we can talk about is there's actually the US version, but there's the Japanese version, like in every Nintendo game. And Pika right now is playing on the US version, so in the Japanese version, there's a couple of really big differences. And one of the big differences is when you jump, you can actually control and kind of like cut the momentum of your dive kick really short. Um, and you can also change the direction of your dive kick in the middle of the air if you want. And also the special slash that Pika keeps using, he's pushing A and B together to like kind of do that jumping attack thing. Uh, in the Japanese version, you can actually change the direction of that. So for some reason, in the Japanese version, you can change your direction of special slash and the dive kick. But for whatever reason, when they brought it over to North America, the developers are like, you know what, let's take that away. So you'll literally see Pika cannot change directions and he has to commit. So that actually makes the US version, I think, actually a lot harder. It's also worth noting in the arcade version of this game, uh, this whole section right here, you can actually skip. So unfortunately that doesn't exist in the NES version, but there's like this giant weird thing where you just walk through a wall. And it's actually worth looking up kind of like the main version. Um, so at the end of this stage, I will probably curse the run again. Uh, there is 
uh, another quick kill. It's an uh, infinite stun lock. It's one of the few in this team. And it is Bebop. And I dare I say, Bebop's quick kill is actually pretty free as well. So there's a, there's a pretty big window to hit this because of Raphael again. It was a little bit harder to set up with the other turtles, but uh, in theory, it should be free. <laughs> so, come on, Pika! Whoa, whoa. I, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Bebop will come crashing down from the car. No, yeah, see, free. Told you. Easy. Pika's got it under control. <laughs> see? You gotta believe, man. Look at look, Pika, I believed in you. Chat did not. Like, chat's a bunch of assholes. I believed in you, Pika. Just remember that. <laughs> okay. So we're entering, <laughs> we're entering the sewers now. Um, what can we say about the sewers? The sewers are really interesting. If you are an aspiring Turtles 2 runner, whether it's US or Japanese, there is a mystery because at the end of the, the sewer here, there's a boss and he is Baxter Stockman. And to this day, uh, he has actually a weird pattern where he sometimes like comes out of like this little hole that he's hiding in and then he just stops and forever we have tried to figure out how this is a thing because uh, usually when he comes out he's kind of on a figure eight pattern and he's probably tied to the global but if there was a way that you could somehow manipulate this game to get that pattern you'd probably save like 10 seconds or more but unfortunately nobody's been able to figure out that this is one of like the one remaining mysteries of Turtles 2. So hopefully someday somebody figures that out. Um, but in the sewers, it's actually probably one of the easier stages, I would say. Like the enemies in here aren't kind of hard to deal with. And the other thing too is uh, the difference between Turtles 2 and Turtles 3. I don't know if the technology, you know, like. I mean, like, clearly they had, like, better programming, I guess, by the time that they made the third game. Um, but if you notice, every wave of foot soldiers that comes out is always the same color. So in the third game, you actually did have multiple foot soldiers that did different things you had to deal with at the same time, whereas this one, um, you don't really have to deal with anything like that, because any foot soldier that comes out, like, all these guys will be white, the next guys will be blue, and so forth. So uh, you, you always have to deal with the same one, and the kind of enemy set that's in the sewers is pretty simple for the most part to deal with. There's also a lot of waiting here. Um, there's a lot of mousers in the sewer for some reason. I guess it makes sense that they live down instead of running around in like, the main city. Yeah, here is Baxter Stockman. Uh, Baxter, as I said, he'll go in kind of like a figure eight pattern. So as you can see, that's exactly what he's doing. So when he stops like this, uh, coming up, this is kind of like or maybe people, no, he's not going to kill him before then. But when he stops like this coming up, or he'll keep floating around. Okay, <laughs> he just wanted to float. So that's totally okay. Um, but yeah, if he stopped, that's kind of like the, the mystery pattern that nobody ever figured out. So we're going to enter the snow stage. And Tora is at the end of the snow stage. And this is the first element of like strong RNG. Um, there are some kind of like jumping snowman enemies that are very annoying. There's a couple more, I think there's four in the US version, there's three in the Japanese version, but they are kind of like the, the first enemy that can provide significant time loss on good paces. Because unfortunately the way that the, wor the world works, <laughs> sorry, the way that the game works is uh, enemies spawn from like the left or the right side and it's frame dependent. So as you can see, this was a really good spawn because they both appeared right side. There's going to be two more that spawn, um, or maybe just one more, I guess the US version has three. But they all spawn right side, so that's apparently what you want. Uh, sometimes they spawn literally like left, right, left, so you have to jump back and forth between the screen. And we started feeling the burn of that when Bayes and I ran this game a long time ago, when our times were about 28 minutes in the Japanese version. Um, the record now is like a low 26, so it's almost like a reset point now if you get bad snowmen, and it just... Yeah, it's, it's the first enemy that really sucks. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what Quick Kill Pika will go for. Um, uh, sorry, for the Quick Kill for Tori, because there's multiple different Tori kills that have been developed. And uh, some of them are actually quite hard and have very strict timing. So we have... Let 
I mean, that kind of worked out, actually. Okay. What? Oh, there is a fourth one. See, I knew I wasn't crazy. I thought there was four. Then maybe there's a four and then a three is fine. The Japanese version, I do not believe, has the Pizza Hut signs. They did the corporate chill thing when they brought it to the North American version, but I could be wrong about that. Because I think the Japanese version, the signs are Turtle Power. And then the North American version, they all became Pizza Hut. So yeah, Pika is going to very carefully, as you can see, avoid the punch thing there. Uh, this is a very cool quick kill. This is actually way more precise than it looks. This is not free, so we can say that one. The timing on this one is actually pretty strict, so uh, it, it's cool to see that he went for this one. Yes, uh, like that one is, as Nico said, it's pretty hard. Uh, all of the quick kills that basically don't dive kick Tora uh, are pretty hard to time. So he's kind of like the first boss where it's pretty tricky to do everything. Um, so we're entering, <laughs> we're, we're entering kind of like this uh, road section. I don't know what the official name is. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it, it's like a road. <laughs> I should know this, but it, it's making me laugh in my own head because when I used to run this game a long time ago, I actually had the record in the Japanese version. And I counted this screen, the next screen, and then the next screen is like one split. So when I uploaded my splits on SRC, uh, I just named it like Graniter because I split not by stage, but by the time that you see the boss again. And I think it's like three more whole levels from now. So when people copied my splits to use as a base for their own splits, uh, all of a sudden, this split was like 11 minutes long for people. <laughs> there was a lot of people back then that complained, like, this stage is too long, and I'm like, okay, maybe you should split it up into a couple of uh, different splits there. But it was kind of funny to see people at the time splitting. It was like a nine-minute section where all the other stages in this game are like three minutes long. So yeah, I guess it's like a garage, a parking garage or something. We're, we're introduced to these red guys, which are actually kind of annoying, especially in the US version. Um, they shoot guns, and they're actually really easy to hit. So the way that your iframes work in this game is you have a ridiculous amount of iframes, but so does the enemy. And if the enemy is in the middle of kind of like a special attack or something like that, you can be in the middle of your attack and the enemy will still basically like outrage you. So it's actually very calculated the way, if you watch Pika's movement with like Raphael, sometimes he'll move like a little bit diagonal down. Uh, and that's to like make sure that if an enemy is in a startup animation where he's about to dive kick or like shoot a gun, that that animation doesn't actually beat, you know, like Raphael's special slash. So his movement is like very, 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 very calculated. And entering uh, the end of this stage, sorry, I guess it's the next couple of stages that I split. But entering this stage, we're going to see Baxter, his mutated form, and this kill is free. So we can continue with the F word there. Uh, all we have to do is kind of like rhythmically trap Baxter and he can't break away from this. You can, if you're a little bit sloppy, attack too early and like those orb things will send you flying backwards to the left. Um, but for the most part, this is very easy to time. And this is actually kind of silly because this quick kill is like, at this point, probably 10 years old. Um, this was like one of the few remaining strats that existed in really old runs when I used to run this game and have like the Japanese record that I saw in runs back then, which would have been like two or three years ago, that existed, you know, like seven years before me. So that that's just one thing that never changed. So we are entering the highway. I do know this thing, <laughs> the name of this level. Uh, the highway is probably one of the biggest swings, I think, when it comes to time. Uh, this is probably the first real stage, like if you get to run this far, where you can start just bleeding. Like literally, you bleed out. And there's multiple factors. There's helicopters later on in the stage, which can be really annoying to deal with. And there's also a couple of sets of these road kill Rodneys that are coming up, which are very annoying to deal with. Something that's not annoying in the Japanese version is there's these guys that just like run out and throw like nuclear bombs. They're very easy to kill because they take one shot in the Japanese version of the dive kick. But Pika does not have that luxury. So the dive kick is actually weaker in this game. Uh, it takes two hits to kill enemies. So. Uh, these dynamite guys are actually really annoying. So he has to walk up in a very specific way to hit them. He can't dive kick, otherwise it takes two hits. 
Um, in the Japanese version, you can just dive kick them on the back. So this section, I think, is definitely harder on um, the US version uh, because of all of the enemy sets pretty much in this stage. These javelin guys also, if they start throwing, like it's really hard to close distance on them. So these are the bomb guys, uh, if I remember correctly, they'll just toss bombs. And it's really annoying because you have to kind of wait in the US version because the bombs actually do a lot of damage. Um, Pika probably wouldn't be in any situation where he can't or doesn't need health. Like for the most part, I think he would never die, you know, unless it's like damage trading with Krang. Because um, he's a very skilled, obviously, at this game. But uh, when you're new, the bombs take a huge amount of damage. I think they're actually the most damaging thing in the entire game. Uh, second damaging being Shogun. So, uh, we don't have really a boss at the end of the stage. Uh, it just kind of leads on to like more highway section. And uh, maybe the boss at the end of the stage is like a tire. <laughs> You, you hit back a tire or whatever, and the stage is kind of like abruptly ends. So we're almost at that section. You'll see a bunch of tires to the right side here. And we are almost done. So we, we can say that the boss of this stage is like the tires. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, a couple more guys to kill, and then we'll be on, uh, I guess, like the actual highlight, which is when you get attacked by helicopters, because logically that makes a whole lot of sense. Javelin guys, yeah. So these helicopters have two patterns. They can kind of come in really fast, they can come in really slow, and depending if they come in fast or slow, you have to slash uh, specifically to accommodate for that. If they come in fast, you have to obviously slash faster. If they come in slow, you kind of have to delay everything a little bit. And the helicopters, again, if they get out of control, uh, I remember timing it when I still had the record. You could kill a helicopter, I think, in like three seconds, but if it literally went everywhere, we had little records at the time where people were taking like 12 seconds on like each helicopter. So the problem with the helicopters is they drop bombs and it's very, very easy uh, because you're in the middle of a jumping animation if you actually miss time the helicopter that you'll just fall into a bomb. So it's, it's pretty easy to do that. Pika will go into the middle of this road to actually reduce the animation to go back to the road because if you're in the far right corner, you have to go all the way back to the middle of the road before this cutscene activates. And this cutscene is probably one of the weirdest things in the entire game because we reunite with April. We jump in the van and she saves us and immediately we crash. And it's that quick. <laughs> it's like, thanks April, you made everything worse. <laughs> so, Splinter gets kidnapped. Goodbye Splinter and we're off to save Splinter. Uh, this stage, I think, is probably Pika's favorite stage. Uh, when he took the record in the US version, he got shocked like five times. <laughs> Which, when I verified that run on SRC, uh, I I was laughing. <laughs> like, I, I don't think, like, if you're brand new, I'll call Pika out a little bit. When you're brand new in this game, you could probably avoid the lasers completely. Um, but Pika got shocked like five times in a row and it was in his record for a long time, so I thought that was fabulous. So we'll see if Pika repeats kind of like electricity record strats here. Um, there's some literally lasers just as he jumps on this platform. These things. So yeah, Pika got shocked like five times in a row here. I I'm thinking Pika's gonna avoid the lasers, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> like, they're pretty stationary, they're easy to avoid. But so far, so good. <laughs> and uh, leaving this section, we have probably another annoying enemy in at least the Turtles 2 universe. Oh no! No, Pika! Two! <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, we have drones, <laughs> we have drones coming up. <laughs> and the drones uh, are actually a really, really, really annoying enemy. Uh, they're very specific to kill because you can kill them in, I think, as low as three slashes in the US version. Maybe four. I'm not familiar with the US version. Um, but they're very specific in the Japanese version, and you can kill them uh, very quickly. But if you're not fast enough, they again have the problem that's reoccurring in this run. They just kind of fly around and float forever. So as we are past this section, um, there's actually something else to note too. After the drones, at least in the US version, there's probably, in my opinion, kind of like the hardest subset of enemies, and it's just a bunch of yellow guys with boomerangs. Um, but we'll see 
what the drones look like here. There's going to be four that come out, and uh, it's a very specific slash timing to get rid of both here. So, um, okay, there you go. That's a, that's a very cool strat. I was not familiar with that one, so that's the first time I kind of see that. But I like that, because you just get rid of all four at the same time. So yeah, these enemies, this is actually a really annoying section on the US version. Um, the enemies are obviously random in how they come out, and then if you're caught in obviously that special, slack, special attack animation, it's really easy to get hit by a boomerang here. Um, in my opinion, that might be like the hardest little group of enemies in the entire game to specifically not take like an accidental hit on. Like you're not going to lose like tons of time or anything, but to just get through that section without accidentally getting hit, it's, it's actually pretty hard. Um, so coming up here, we have... what is his name? Granitor? And Granitor has multiple different quick kills, both in the US version and in the Japanese version. He's got a really weird hit kind of timer. Uh, you want to... okay, so... okay, I think he's just going to tank the damage. But in the Japanese version, uh, you can basically hit him four or five times, but when Pika's getting hit on that fifth hit, you can jump like that in neutral jump to make him whiff, and you can time that over and over so it creates a loop here. So, I guess, I'm not quite sure why you would mix and match, like mix and match the strat. Um, but maybe it's faster if you wait on some and you take damage on others or something like that. I'm not familiar with the US version timing. Um, but yeah, Grandmother is actually a pretty easy boss. And not much to him. And we save Splinter. I don't know how the Mousers, that always bothered me as a kid because like the Mousers take Splinter away and they're like one inch tall. And then he's like tied to the wall that's like 30 feet in the air. I never understood the logic behind that. But anyway, we are entering the dojo. This is by far and easily probably the worst in both versions. The worst stage in the entire game. It's both the worst stage in the entire game and it houses the worst boss in the entire game. So at the end of this screen we have uh, Shogun who has a lot of things that we can say about Shogun. Um, we have these kind of like fat ninja guys. They're pretty easy, but Pika's actually controlling the movement very, very, very good. And he... Uh, if you watch like the ninjas or whatever, he will like literally walk diagonal down to avoid getting hit. I have slept for seven hours. <laughs> Hello, that horse. So, entering... Uh, Later on, later on, sorry, later on in this stage, it is Tigers, and the Tigers in the US version are actually really annoying. Uh, they're a little bit easier in the Japanese version just because you can control your slash and turn around, but the Tigers, yet again, have that problem where if you mess it up, they just run away forever on you, and it's an incredibly huge loss of time, especially this late into the run, because if you're timing this stuff, you're probably around here in the US version, like 21 minutes or something like that. And the uh, Japanese version is a little bit quicker. I think you get to Shogun around like 20 minutes, but 20 minutes in the run, you're dealing with three major RNG elements in this stage alone. You're dealing with the Tigers, which we'll see. Right after the Tigers, there's the Scorpions, which are easily the worst enemy in the entire game. And then we have Shogun at the end of the stage, which is the worst boss in the entire game. So what makes the spider or the spiders, the scorpions, so horrible is they're like literally programmed to like basically count to you in every single way. Um, the tigers aren't super bad. Uh, Pika's gonna take hits intentionally there, like that wasn't an accident, because as he flies backwards, he'll be able to like abuse his iframes to hit the tiger again to basically like one cycle it so it doesn't run off screen. Same here, uh, it's very intentional if he's taking these hits right now and that's to make sure that he has the iframe so again the tiger doesn't escape because if it runs off screen it loses like 4 or 5 seconds or something until the tiger reappears. So from here the scorpions are super annoying. You really want them to spawn all right side uh, so you can kind of loop them like this. As soon as they spawn left side they start shooting lasers at you and they can walk around and they become a lot harder to kill. And even though this is going really well, the time loss on like world record paces is actually quite bad. So they're a horrible, horrible enemy. And to really cram all of the nerd information all at once, uh, Shogun at the very end of the stage is one of the worst bosses because he's on a global timer. And uh, he'll swing his weapon every, sorry, he'll lose his head about every 4.25 seconds or something. I think I remember tasking it to. So basically there's two things that don't allow him to lose his head. If Shogun is hit, uh, and he's in the middle of hit stun, his head will not come off. Or if Shogun is swinging his weapon, his head will not come off. 
If he's just standing there and the global timer ticks over, sometimes he'll lose his head. It is entirely possible to be screwed by RNG in this game because you can get to Shogun and on the frame, literally, uh, Shogun will be active and you can hit him, he'll lose his head. Like, you can just lose. So there's nothing you can do in that situation. There's literally been runs that I've been watching or I've done myself where you get to Shogun and he just loses his head. So this was a quick kill that I figured out a long time ago. Although not this one actually. Peek is doing something completely different. Oh dude! Dude, so good! <laughs> oh dude! I am so impressed. Dude, no, I am so impressed Pika that you went for that. That is like series of frame perfect inputs to actually stun lock uh Shogun. No. Good job, Pika. I'm I'm so glad that you went for that. That is Probably the hardest strat in the entire game. You can stun lock. Uh, yes, it's like literally like 13 frame perfects in a row. It's ridiculous. So I did not expect that. I was gonna say you can loop him in the corner, do a far easier strat, but no, that caught me off guard. So we're entering the Tectodrome. Um, this is the final stage. Yes, this was Cave One. <laughs> uh, and this, this stage is kind of a mix between, I would say, some hard stuff, some hard enemy sets, but at the same time, it's actually kind of easy because they, they kind of threw everything at you in this stage. There's like foot soldiers of all colors and stuff. And that doesn't, like these, these like foot soldiers with swords, they're actually pretty easy to deal with. But when they send out the guys or they all have guns, it was a little bit easier, or sorry, harder to deal with. Um, the big kind of like time losses in this stage is the Robo Kill Rodney's return. And it's always kind of nerve-wracking on, you know, like, world record paces, because even if one gets away from you, you lose suddenly, like, five seconds. So these guys are at a point where they're running it, and they're actually on pace. They enter this, you know, like, minus one or minus two seconds. So literally one roadkill Rodney can get away from you and can just end a record attempt. So we have two groups of roadkill Rodneys which are not here for a while. And I guess, yeah, we have, at the end of this screen, kind of like a mini boss rush. We have a dude called Trogdor, or whatever the hell that guy's name is. Trag I can't remember that guy's name. I always forget that guy's name. Tragdor or something like that. It's like a red guy. And then we have Krang, and then we have Shredder. So Krang is like, yeah, General Trag, thank you. Trogdor is a home star runner. <laughs> I think I failed. <laughs> See, I know my turtles, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah. We have Trag, General Trag. Thank you, chat. And uh, he, in the US version and the Japanese version, has some pretty, uh, I don't know. He, he's got a pretty strict quick kill too. I don't know if anybody RTAs either like the Japanese or the North American quick kill version because it's entirely possible. There's kind of an elevator section coming up where you're gonna get lowered down on the platform and these like bowling balls follow you. But at the end of the elevator section, there's a piece of pizza that you can grab that's actually like probably the most important pizza in the entire game. So at least in the Japanese version, it's entirely possible to grab that piece of pizza and then one cycle uh, trag. I don't know if it's the same possibility in the North American version, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what Pico will go for there. Something really silly, I don't know if it's a bug. Uh, if you have like even one life here, and you, uh, there's like a door before a trag comes out that he kind of like kicks open and it goes flying. This was discovered by Omclot, and I don't know if it's a bug or if it was like a really obscure hidden Easter egg, but I guarantee almost nobody knows about that. But if you're standing in front of that door, and as soon as the door comes out, you slash the door and it passes through you, I think you get like a huge amount of points to the point that you get like one life and you go all the way up to like eight or like nine lives or something like that. And I don't know exactly how you make it work, but Omquat posted a video about that a long time ago and I was like, I had no idea that existed. That was like never a thing that I knew was a thing. So as I said, these are the two sets of Roadkill Rodneys. He could group them both very well. Uh, doesn't have to deal with any kind of runaways or anything like that. And we're gonna see Treg coming up pretty much after this wave of foot soldiers here. So Treg is pretty easy uh, in terms of the boss kills, at least in the Japanese version. Depending again if you want to go for that one cycle, why that pizza was so important was if any of these foot soldiers hit you, you'll actually have to die at some point. You'll run out of health uh, trading with it. So I don't know what happens in uh, the US version. It's very possible to avoid a death because the death animation is like three or four seconds or something. 
Uh, once he gets to low health, he'll start neutral jumping. So at that point, you save a little bit of time. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, you save a little bit of time to avoid the death animation. And after this, we're going to be fighting Krang. So Krang, straight up, he's got a theme in Turtles games as being kind of like the biggest piece of shit when it comes to bosses and stuff. In Turtles in Time, he's a huge source of RNG. In Turtles 2, he's also a huge source of RNG. Uh, there's a very funny thing that was found by Frank FC here, where Krang kind of flexes. You can hit him out of that flex and save two seconds. So for years, nobody knew this. We just let Krang flex every single time. And uh, yeah, we, we, Frank one day was like, hmm, I wonder if you can hit him outside of that flex. And apparently you can. He's not invincible there. So why Krang sucks is his kick is completely random. Sometimes he will kick you like 40 times in a row. Sometimes he will kick you so less, like so infrequently, that you can one cycle him and not have to take this back. So the average Krang kill um, generally takes about like one and a half health bars. Uh, so he should be dying relatively soon. Um, but yeah, it, there's a huge variation of how fast Krang can die compared to how fast sometimes he doesn't die. Like maybe upwards to like 15 seconds or so. So this quick kill, if anybody wants to be a hero, actually I figured out and it's been unchanged for almost four years now. Even longer, I think. So I really want one day to somebody figure out a different quick kill, but Shredder loops himself. And uh, you can see here, he'll walk around. Ooh, okay, there we go, he'll walk around. So from here, uh, the fake Shredder, which is on the left, there's a real and a fake Shredder. The fake Shredder will keep shooting lightning and the real Shredder will keep attacking you. So it'll just go over and over and over like that until it's dead, or until Shredder is dead, sorry. And yeah, that's gonna be pretty much what this quick kill looks like. Uh, Cat, and you're listening in the shadows, uh, once the screen shakes, that's when time is, and I'll say time anyway, but not much to talk about this quick kill. Um, you're actually pretty safe, like those lasers are actually instant kill. So if you go down too far, it turns you into a turtle and you instantly die. But there's probably like a 10 pixel window that you can walk down there. And uh, until you're actually hit by the laser. So the hitbox looks a lot more deceptive. You actually do have a lot of space to kind of move around there. So Shredder hitting Pika a little bit. It's going to be close. Oh, you got it. Ah, he got you. <laughs> That's OK. All right, so time is coming up. Time. And yeah, that is Turtles 2. Uh, always a fun run. This is one of my favorite ones to watch. It's a really fun run. Uh, always happy to provide commentary. Pika is a really, really good runner. Uh, he runs basically everything he's got a very competitive time in. So I just set up a bot command already right now. Definitely go check out Pika. He is a very friendly guy. Uh, Definitely a big fan of him, and again, he's got all kinds of competitive time in all kinds of games. But Pika, if you want to say anything, welcome on in. Uh, if not, then we can set up. Yeah, but I want to thank you for commentating. It's uh, insane commentating. And, uh, <laughs> I did some mistakes, stupid mistakes, like plus one. That's fine, I think. I have not played this game for a long time, and uh, I think it's good. Um, and I'm trying to show everything, I hope uh, people scam in the game just because uh, this game is insane and not so hard, just uh, only two bosses and uh, a lot of energy stuff, global tanga stuff and it's, it's a cool game, why not? And uh, thank you for my fun, Dave, that's cool my fun and uh, I think I don't have any word uh, in my English, it's not too good to say uh, everything <laughs> No worries. Uh, always, always love doing commentary for this one. I like commentary in general, but Turtles 2 is probably one of my favorite runs to both commentate and watch. So. Yeah, same. This game is my favorite, maybe. And the best speed on, uh, on ES. It, I, I don't know if I call it that far for me, but it's a good one. <laughs> so. No, I mean, uh, my old Eckert is uh, my best oh. ever. Ah, I see. Literal best. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe will Batman will be better. <laughs> I, I think Batman's a little bit better than this game, at least. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> All 
Alright, well, we'll switch you off and we'll get you ready because Pika is going to hang around for more run and he's going to do Pizza Cats, but I'm going to duck out of commentary and Angel Undead will help you guys out with that one. So we will be right back. <laughs> 